This video is sponsored by Satechi. It feels a bit unreal to be able to afford an Apple monitor. You know, a $1,600 monitor is never cheap considering the fact that it's a 5K Retina display with a 27 inch panel and apparently an outstanding camera and great audio performance. I mean, sounds cool, probably not Pro Display XDR cool, but I'm excited to see what this could bring to a minimal desk setup. Could be the monitor that finally pushes me to switch to dual displays workstation? Huh, maybe. Although $4,000 becomes a bit obsessive. Who knows, maybe you'll subscribe to the channel so we can afford more tech. <laughs> Was that crying good? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I think we should definitely be in a Marvel movie. I've had this thing for over a week now and you know, it's it's been fun. Not ultra wide fun though. Hardware wise, it's absolutely solid. The whole chassis is made out of aluminum and glass. Great attention to detail around corners, cutouts are perfect. Black bezels are a bit chunky, although the panel looks beautiful. For standard glass, it really is awesome, but I have yet to try the nano texture glass. As solid as this monitor feels, which in my opinion, there is nothing like it on the market, the huge letdown is the unibody stand that comes built in. Don't get me wrong, the hinge on this is buttery smooth and you barely need to apply pressure for tilt. However, at purchase, you need to decide what type of stand you wish to have. Meaning that if in the future you would like to vest a mounted, well, it's just not possible. You see, my review unit has a tilt adjustable stand and that's about it. It tilts from minus five degrees to 25 degrees, but it's a bummer cause there isn't a height adjustable feature in case things feel low. You just get this standard four inches and three quarters in height from the base to the bottom chin of the display. However, for an extra $400, you can upgrade to their tilt and height adjustable stand. But I mean, I would just rather buy a quality vest mount monitor stand, so I would just have more adjustability features. Next to the stand in the back, you will find three USB-C ports delivering 10 gigabytes per second, all next to a single Thunderbolt 3 port to charge and feed data to your Mac. Satechi was kind enough to send us a few goodies to accomplish this though. We've got their Thunderbolt 4 cables that are very nicely built, braided and can be easily stored if you want to travel with them. You see, Satechi sponsored this video so we can keep bringing cool tech to the office. They are a company that brings productivity to a setup in style. I've been working with them for the past three years on Instagram and over the years they've sent really cool tech, whether that's a Mac mini dock, their pro hubs to allow you to rock dual displays on M1 MacBooks, iMac hubs, and even their 165 watt USB-C Gantt charger. I've had multiple of these throughout the year and awesome enough, it is a company that very much sells its products at Apple stores. Their products can be found in more than 10,000 stores across the globe, which I find very impressive. For this Mac Studio display, we decided to get their USB-C clamp hub to make it easy for us to quickly access some SD card slots. It's really nice and minimal, love the silver matching the studio and the clamp makes it super easy to install. Although my favorite one has to be their stand and hub for the Mac Studio, it features a USB-C data port, three USB-A data ports, micro SD card readers, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the best thing is that it's equipped with an internal SSD enclosure. Yeah, I tried it and the speeds are phenomenal. If you are looking to get some awesome accessories for your Apple devices, head to satechi.net and take a look at their product lines. I'll make sure to leave a link down below so you can take your Apple Display Studio to a whole new level, which is all being operated by a built-in A13 processor that gets cooled with the help of this exhaust grill and inside fans powered by this cable, which weirdly enough cannot be disconnected. I find it a bit odd. I was expecting to have something like the iMac, 
although the power cable is braided like on the Mac Studio. Overall, the back of it is really nicely designed, very well done, screams Apple in a minimal way. Not a fan of the black chunky bezels, but they do add a nice contrast to the setup itself. At least the panel itself is quite thin with only 1.2 inches when talking monitor depth. The monitor itself though can take quite a bit of room. So do yourself a favor and save more than just 6.6 .6 inches if you go with this stand. Else, if you do choose to go with a height adjustable one, make sure your clearance is greater than 8.1 inches. Being a 24.5 inches by 14.5 inches monitor, I say it sits pretty well in this little cozy setup we have going on here. Goes super well with white peripherals, matches the MacBook, and sits nicely with a Mac Studio, of course. Okay, so the most important thing is, what can a $1,600 monitor bring to the table? With a resolution of 5120 by 2880, I sure hope it can deliver a lot. For creatives, of course, because this is literally who this monitor is meant for. It's the third time I sit in front of a 5K resolution display, and for someone that is used to using an ultra wide, I really like this. I do have to admit, I'm not used to glossy displays. You see, coming from a matte screen surface, it can get quite tricky when it comes to placing this monitor. If you place it near a window, you will see a lot of reflections. You either have to sit in front of a window or in a spot that doesn't contain direct light. It can get a bit tricky. I'm not used to having glossy finishes or crazy glare on my monitors. But that's why regardless, I usually always put a nice cozy lamp next to it, like this one from Gantry. It just creates a nice vibe for monitors overall. The big picture here is that the display does look extremely good and takes advantage of all these pixels which makes graphics really stand out, especially when consuming HDR content like the new Formula 1 season. Let me know with a hashtag F1 down below if you are watching the current season. Besides that, I think for us the most essential use for this would be color grading and design. I am looking to get a loop deck and switch to Resolve so we can color grade things to perfection. So honestly, with a monitor that supports 1 billion colors, a wide color gamut, and 600 nits of brightness, it screams by me. Although I've been finding it weird not being able to turn it on or off or even increase its brightness. I am happy with the True Tone technology, especially since we do work till late, it's nice to see the screen adapting to your surroundings. To compare, in HDR mode, the MacBook and the monitor aren't too far off when it comes to peak brightness. In real life, the blacks and white don't jump as much as I was expecting them to do on the MacBook Pro when comparing this to the monitor. But hear this though. James! Quite insane considering that the MacBook speakers are already really, really good. I'd give these monitor speakers an 11 out of 10, probably the best speakers on a monitor by miles, probably cause within the lower button of the chassis, in each corner we have four force canceling woofers and towards the bottom, a couple of tweeters. Very similar to what we have on the MacBook Pros, but comparing it to my ultra wide though, Well, it makes you want to cry because it honestly just sounds nothing alike. For $1,600 though, I am quite happy that the camera delivers center stage with a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with 122 degrees of field of view and an aperture of 2.4. It does look pretty good. I do like the microphones. This three mic array with high signal to noise ratio really does deliver great noise cancellation. Again though, my favorite feature really is center stage mostly because it would be practical for us when dealing with clients to have both of us in focus. To hate it or love it, honestly this display is truly a fantastic piece of hardware, but only meant for a specific subset of individuals, which seems to me like Apple is targeting those types of people with their latest studio release. I would love to spend time with dual studio displays so I can maybe code, design some UIs, and learn some iOS development. I feel like I would be able to come up with a solid long-term review eventually. The issue is that I really, really do like my ultra wide and I don't see myself giving that up yet. However, I know for a fact Jan would love this. If you are not a gamer, you're not an ultra wide fanboy like I am, I think it's really hard not to recommend giving this monitor a try. Mostly if you are looking for something high-end. It does not work with Windows by the way, if that's something that you were wondering about. 
Look, a monitor is something that can last you for a very long time. And so if you think that you need the color, the pixels, the quality, and what it features in terms of performance and hardware, I strongly think you should at least try one. Just buy it and try it for 15 days. Look, all I know is for an Apple device to be worth it, you really have to be invested in their ecosystem. If you think you can benefit from all of these features because you own a MacBook, a Mac Studio, and so on, I think it's a buy. Otherwise, I would even argue that an LG Ultra Fine is way better. Not only you can rock a MacBook on it, but you can also connect a PC when needed. It lasts for longer and it serves more devices. I hope this video helps, and if you are on the verge of buying one, I really hope this clears some doubts. I will for sure try to get a couple of them, so I will make a long-term review at some point. I'll see you all soon. Take care.